Hi students, welcome back. Uh, lesson six, this is part D. Uh, two examples that we'll go through. Um, the main point is just to draw diagrams of the design experiment. In Math 127, we really don't learn the tools to analyze design experiment data, all that, all that. Well, you'd have to wait for Math uh, 128, which is our Stat 2 course, usually running in the spring semester each year. Let's get to it. Uh, to research the effect, here's an example. Research the effect of wearing sunglasses when playing poker. Uh, player ran an experiment over the course of one year. Each time he went to the casino on his walk in, he flipped a coin. If it came up heads, he decided to wear sunglasses that day. If it came up tails, no sunglasses. He kept track of his daily net winnings for the year, compared the mean profits with and without sunglasses. So it sounds like whether or not he wears sunglasses, that's the factor that's going to be the randomized factor in this experiment. Um, he played four times each week, twice during the week, so I guess Monday through Friday he went up there two days and played poker, and then on both Saturday and Sunday, four times total each week. Players during the week are quite different than players on the weekend. Uh, weekend players might be a little bit easier to play against because more recreational players. So because the players vary wide, uh, wildly during the week versus on the weekend, he noted this factor down in his records. Uh, the way that this experiment was run, if during the week, if he wore sunglasses on the first day, then the second time during that week, he didn't. So for instance, uh, if, if he went and played poker on Monday, Heads comes up, wears sunglasses. The next time he goes up during the week is no sunglasses. So that's how he's randomizing. All we'd like to do is diagram the experiment, labeling everything from the experimental units to the factors and response variable, all that stuff. All right, so we'll go over here to the sideboard and we'll get this down on paper. Let's see here. 52 weeks. Playing poker four times each week, so 52 weeks times four is going to be 108 sessions, poker playing sessions. Okay, and so those are the experimental units. When we draw this diagram, we'll pop that up here at the top. In fact, so I don't have to rewrite it, I'm just going to put that in a box up there. So a total of 108 sessions, again, just to try to label everything. These are the experimental units. for this designed experiment. Okay, uh, we've got two factors here. There's one, what's gonna be random factor. And that random factor is sunglasses. Randomized by flip of the coin, when he's walking in, heads wear sunglasses, tails don't. There's one blocking factor here. And that blocking factor is sort of day of the week, whether it's during the week or on the weekend. That is not random. You know, if, if he decides to play poker on a Wednesday, the, the day of the week is not random. So the blocking factor is, I guess, weekday versus weekend. The reason we're keeping track of this for this design experiment is because he thinks it matters. He thinks the players are different during the week than during the weekend. So we want to make sure that we can account for that. Okay. Of the 108 sessions, we're going to split this into two sides. This will be my blocking factor the way that I'm drawing this. This will be the blocking factor. This is not random. This is not random at all. Maybe I'll even write that down. Okay. Uh, let's put the weekdays here. So half of my 108 sessions would be what? 54. Where am I getting these crazy numbers here? Half. Ah. 104. <laughs> Well, we'll just fix that. 
52 times. I'm confusing myself here. You can say it, John. 208. 208. Ah, yeah. Thank you, John. Cameraman's checking up on me. I knew something wasn't making sense here. 208 sessions. Hopefully, you caught that at home. Half of those 208 sessions come over here during the week. It's 104. Whole year, 104 weekday sessions. Over on the other side, 104, half of the 208, 104 weekend sessions. Again, not random. When you have one blocking factor like we have in this, it's almost like you're running two separate simple design experiments with one factor. I have one experiment over here for my weekday sessions, and I have one over here for my weekend sessions. Okay, sunglasses, yes or no? This is the random part. 104 weekday sessions will get chopped into two levels of that factor. This is random, sort of put that right here, All right on both sides of the coin. Heads, we'll wear sunglasses. So we'll put an H here for heads, T here for tails. This is with sunglasses. This side would be without. Uh, half of 104, 52. Numbers are making sense now. Same thing happens here on the right side. I, I'm playing poker 104 weekend sessions. This is random heads versus tails. Heads, we wear sunglasses. So here's with sunglasses. Over here would be with out. 52 times, 52 times. And again, all together, if we're playing four times a week, it is 208 sessions over the course of a year, not 108. All right. We need to, I sort of painted myself into the corner. I probably shouldn't write on the wall down here, but um, we need to measure something at the end, the response variable, what's the outcome. Every time the person plays poker, they measure how much money that they won or lost. We'll just put that here in the corner. Response variable is, is going to be that net winnings. And we would record that for each session. I don't have much room to write, so let's just talk it out. I will have 52 results from the 52 times during the week when I wore sunglasses. I would take those results. Sometimes the player probably won, sometimes the player lost. We would average these out, okay? I have 52 results in this factor here, this level, this treatment. I would average those out, and I would have four averages, one from each of the 52 sessions, okay? The main comparison we would make would not be at the blocking factor, okay? It could be of interest to see if it's statistically significant. Is there a difference between weekday sessions versus weekend sessions. But the main comparison would be for this weekday session, look at the mean. On average, how much money is the player winning or losing wearing sunglasses? Compare that for the weekdays, how much money on average without sunglasses. If these averages are close, then we might not be able to make a call. If they're very far apart, maybe we can tell, statistically speaking, that sunglasses actually make a difference. Okay. We would run the same thing over here on the other side for the weekend. Okay. When you have a blocking factor, your main concern is still with the factor that you're randomizing. Okay. You think that the blocking factor may have an impact on results, so we want to sort of eliminate that by blocking. All right, plenty of replication here. Right, We have 52 results from each, and so all those definitions we learned in the previous video I think we've got them here and, and we can see what's happening. All right, second example, we'll go back to the main board here. A 
I'll read this while I erase the sideboard here. The wife of a math professor, not going to say who, but somebody in the Cecil math department, actually went online and, and bought a kit. So caterpillars come in the mail. It's probably hard to pick this up on the video, but this is this is their habitat that comes, and, and you, you put the caterpillars in this habitat. Um, they're supposed to turn into butterflies. I think there's a guarantee that um, at least three out of the five will turn into a butterfly or you get your money back. Um, so let's just sort of take this real life situation and, and crank it up a notch, make it into a designed experiment. So suppose the wife of a math professor actually bought four kits of five caterpillars each. Uh, at least this I can do in my head pretty confidently. There, there will be 20 caterpillars this time. Ten were kept indoors, while the other ten were left out on the deck. Each group was put inside their internet-provided habitats. So whether they were in the house like they're supposed to be, or out on the deck, we put it in this sort of mesh cage. In both groups, half the caterpillars were given their internet-provided food packet, but the other half were given sugar water and, and I don't know what caterpillars eat, but here leaves from the yard. So, sort of made this up, but it's a nice little example. Good news, luckily all 20 caterpillars turned into cocoons. All 20 cocoons turned into beautiful butterflies. Um, keep in mind, on 15 of the 20, she really didn't follow the instructions because you're supposed to keep them inside and you're supposed to feed them this cup of food that comes with the kit, okay? The variable of interest is time until butterfly. So we'll just start the clock the second that we get them, and we'll see if one of these combinations of inside, outside, food or sugar water is the quickest. Diagram the experiment and label everything. All right, back to the sideboard. Four kits, five caterpillars per kit. We have 20 experimental units. Starts up at the top here. Here are my 20 caterpillars. You can spell that right in your notes if that's not good, but it's the same on the slide. Um, there's no blocking factor here. Both factors are random. For each of the caterpillars, we we'll, can flip coins, we can draw caterpillar names out of a hat if we name them, and They'll either go outside on the deck or they'll stay inside the house. So off to the side here, I've got two factors, both random. One factor is, well, location. Two levels to that factor, inside or outside. The second factor was food. Two levels to that one. What were they? The food packet or our sugar water and leaves combo. Two factors, two levels each. There's four treatments. There's the inside with the food packet. There's the inside with the sugar water and leaves outside with food packet, outside with sugar water, and leaves. Luckily, 20 goes into four real nice. Five caterpillars will get each of those four treatments. They're both random. There's no blocking factor in this. Okay, so however we decide to randomize, we've got to do it. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we put first here, really, so I'll just do location. Um, I'll just remind myself that this is random. Uh, 10 will go outside, here, 10 will go inside. Random again. Of the 10 outside, we'll split the food up. So we'll draw names out of a hat. I'm not sure what caterpillars prefer. The company would surely say the food packet. Five will get the packet. Five, we're good. Sugar and leaves. 
Same over here, you get the idea. I'll remind myself again, this, this is random. Both the first factor and the second. We have four treatments. If I, if I ask you, student, what's the treatment, here they are. There's four of them. It's the combination of the factors that the caterpillars are receiving. We'll have five observations here. The response variable is, what am I measuring at the end of the experiment? Okay, what is it? It's time until butterfly. So we start the clock when the UPS truck comes with the Amazon box. And, you know, down here, Let's write what the response variable is, just off to the side, right? Response is time till butterfly. How would I summarize those five values? I, the, the most logical thing at, at this point in our statistical uh, education is just calculate the mean. So, right, I can calculate a Y bar, and I would do it again, again, and again. So I'll just put it here. I won't invent any numbers. We've done that a, a few times where I give you some what-if scenarios. Okay, what if, what if this was two and a half days versus three days? Okay, but we'll get four sample means from our four groups. Okay, think about analyzing this. Okay. If you were going to analyze this, and in a lot of ways we don't have those tools yet in our statistical toolbox, but one thing you could do is start to look for which group had the smallest time until butterflies. Um, because I have two random factors here, I could look for just a location effect. Does it really only matter if the butterflies are outside or inside? Okay, probably temperature has something to do with it. So I could look for that effect. I could look for just is sugar and leaves the best versus just the food? I could look for that main effect. And when we start to have multiple factors that are random, you can start looking for interactions. It could be that just one pathway is the best and the rest are sort of together but worse, right? This might be the best combination. Okay. Now in a stat one course, we don't get to that. So that's a stat two topic. Um, but we do like to give you the background information and sort of think about how would we design these experiments. All right, so that wraps up this lesson. Remember that 52 times 4 is 208, and we'll see you in class. Thanks for watching.